All right, here we go. All right, guys. It's been a little while since we've uh, done a little book report for you. I read this book a couple of weeks ago, or I finished it. And when I first found this book, it was actually a review of this book from a Wall Street Journal. And uh, for the longest time, I used to take pictures of those. Uh, I, I would get the weekend Wall Street Journal. Uh, I, they would have reviews of different books. And I'm like, oh, that looks interesting. Take a picture of it. Maybe I'll look for it next time in the bookstore. And a couple of times I have found books that I was like, oh, wow, yeah, that's the one I wanted it, you know, that I saw being reviewed. This was one of them. And I was looking at some pictures in my, uh, that I had, uh, and I'm like, holy cow, I think I'm going to get that book. So I did. And what book is that? I say, I say, son. <laughs> It's a tribute to legendary animators, Bob, Chuck, and Tom McKimson. All right. And it's, and it's uh, written by Robert McKimson Jr. So looking at the way I look at the screen there. It's, a, it's an awesome book. If, if you're into uh, some of the older cartoons, like uh, Foghorn Leghorn, also also a boy. <laughs> or Bugs Bunny, Daffy Duck, Sylvester, um, Porky Pig, Wile E. Coyote, Roadrunner, Marvin the Martian, um, Speedy Gonzalez, Tasmanian Devil, uh, let's see who else, uh, Yosemite Sam, Pepe Le Pew, uh, and uh, Tweety Bird, I don't know if I mentioned Elmer Fudd and Daffy Duck, uh, Porky Pig, the Pink Panther, the one that you see on those, uh, the cartoons they would have, I believe in the 70s. Now, this was about the McKimson brothers, right? And it's very fascinating because, uh, and I wrote several notes so that I wouldn't forget, and I wanted to talk about their dad, Charles Sr., um, was a publisher in Denver newspaper publisher um, and he actually encouraged them to to get into the arts uh, as far as drawing and, and and because they had this interest in it and he kind of like go for it and they studied they took the uh, they went to uh, California and all three of them, all three of them were uh, aspiring artists and they became animators around the late twenties. Um, if you're familiar, if you're not too sure uh, or familiar with the movie industry, when movies would be seen in a theater, uh, it was common to have, uh, where now we see trailers and commercials and then the movie, they would have a double feature in some cases, it would be several cartoons, a couple of cartoons. Uh, in, in many cases, as I mentioned in the review for Sid Gilman, they would have highlights, newsreels. And so those were ways of informing people of what's going on. And of course, these cartoons were perfect fit for prior to the movie. And it was, a, it was an un unbelievable industry that that was going on. Now, these three guys, they're tied in. It, it, it's, I wouldn't call it a mafia, but for lack of a better way of a, a club, if you will, a group of artists and animators in the 30s and the 40s, all tied in together. Uh, Fritz Freling, if, you've, if you watch any of these older cartoons, and I say older because most of them were from the 30s and the 40s, like Bugs Bunny, um, and some of the other uh, cartoons, if you, if you really look closely at who the animators were and some of the names, you're gonna be thinking, well, uh, you're gonna, all of a sudden, when you read this book, you go, oh, I remember seeing that name. Uh, one of those was uh, Leon Schlesinger, uh, I guess. 
because when I read the name, I was like, oh, that's right. I saw it at the beginning of the, of the cartoons that I would see that. And the interesting thing is at the turn of uh, between 29 and 31, as they're getting involved in animation, they had a relationship with Disney, with Walt. And so a lot of these guys were connected in a roundabout way along with uh, Walt Disney. So it, it's really cool the, 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 what they talk about. Um, there were tons of characters. The main character, the, the first big ones that they had was one called Bosco. Let's see if I can find old Bosco to kind of show you. And um, he's kind of, a, let me see if we can find him here quickly. <laughs> Um, and the interesting thing, as I was looking through this, I found out that there were um, cartoons that I, I couldn't believe that the character, there were that many of that for that character and that few for others. Um, here's Bosco. He kind of sort of looks like Steamboat Willie, right? There's Bosco. I believe he's the one playing the piano. And um, so they, and, and Bob, I believe it was Bob McKimson of the three brothers is probably the most prolific uh, artist as far as he, they said he could do a uh, hundred thousand uh, drawings for a cartoon. Um, like the, the same amount of time it would take somebody else, maybe they would do uh, 20,000. So he's like four or five, three to four times faster than everyone else. It's quite prolific. And um, let's see, when it comes to the main characters, um, and then later on uh, when they were with Leon Schlesinger, uh, Schlesinger uh, they kind of gotten involved with uh, Warner of Warner Brothers, right? Um, and then eventually it just kind of stayed in the Warner Brothers family. Hence, every time you see those cartoons, boom, the WB and uh, the big logo there. Uh, some of the stats that I thought were pretty interesting, Bugs Bunny, there was 171 of those. Uh, Sylvester, we had about 100 of them. There were only 30 of the Roadrunner. Um, and I believe... Uh, they said that, uh, what's his name? Speedy Gonzalez, there were 42 of them, 42. I had to double check on that. <laughs> I can only remember a couple of them, but the characters, it was awesome how they used to draw them because they would have people in a sense talking, the people who were doing the voices, uh, speaking, and then they would start uh creating the the drawing based on the way the face looked and of course mel blanc the famous mel blanc the voice uh did so many of those voices and they show you pictures where he's uh he's even getting into the expression of the characters and uh it's a fun book to read it's an easy book to read because there's so many of these you know, you'll find a page where it's just a big picture, like this one of Bugs. I'm looking kind of sci-fi in here, picture here, huh? Um, but I highly recommend it. It's a it's a great book. It's Robert McKimson Jr. who uh, who wrote the book. Um, I didn't realize that they were connected to Mr. Magoo, um, who Jim Backus did the voice. And if you're familiar with Gilligan's Island. <laughs> and he's the, uh, the 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 millionaire, right? Um, but it was it was fascinating to see where they went, how they got to it, and um, and it's just uh, let's see how many pages about three hundred twenty eight, three hundred thirty pages. Highly highly recommend it for anyone who's into animation, uh, especially the classic animation. What I love about some of these older cartoons is the, because um, when they, they showed how they would create a storyboard and talk about what the characters are going to do. 
And the interesting thing was, is that, you know, when you think about it, when you listen to those old cartoons, uh, Foghorn Leghorn, and a good friend of mine, Rob, he likes to use the, likes to repeat the line with his, uh, uh, that boy is as sharp as a bowling ball. You know, they were extremely clever with the, uh, with the, the words, the content, the writing, the, the writing of the characters communicating with each other. Uh, I thought they used a lot of, uh, they were just very, very uh, clever in, in their work. Um, let's see if there, there was something in here, uh, trying not to forget, seeing as wrote all these notes. Um, Tex Avery. Tex Avery was actually the guy who created Bugs Bunny. But they said that even though he created it, Bob McKinson, uh, McKimson really shaped him and created the look. And around 1944, I believe it was, he turned in some paperwork that, to make sure it was copyrighted uh, to, to register Bugs Bunny. And um, he's just listed as the creator but um, in actuality, it was Tex Avery who created the character. Bob just molded him to the character that we see. Uh, highly recommended. Uh, I loved it. I was glad that I, I found that picture and was able to check it out. So I'll say I'll say a song. <laughs> Bob McKinson Jr. Forwarded by uh, John. Well, I can't pronounce his last, his last name. It's a great book. It really is. And uh, you, you see how they, they also talk about how they, one character changed shape just slightly. Um, like Elmer, I think it was Elmer Fudd uh, was, was one of those besides Bugs Bunny, a couple others. You could see how they kind of changed the shape just slightly to the shape that everyone is familiar with. But um, I'll say, I'll say it soon. Read a book. <laughs> All right, guys. Until the next read.